Welcome to our daily devotions from St. Swithin's Church, Pimble. Well, we've started on our reading plan, reading through the whole Bible, based on Nicky Gumbel's book, The Bible in One Year, A Commentary. The day before yesterday, we started with our readings in the Psalms and Proverbs. Uh, yesterday, we started our readings in the New Testament and Matthew's Gospel. And today we're going to start our readings in the Old Testament at Genesis 1, the very beginning of the, the Bible, a good place to start. Well, we are not here by chance. This universe is God's creation. We are made in his image. Genesis gives the account of the beginning of the universe. It goes way beyond the scientific theories of how and when. It answers the questions of who and why. Scientific theories do not prove or disprove this explanation. Rather, they're complementary. Let's read from Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it. And so it was. God called the vault sky and there was evening and there was morning the second day. Now let me summarise what happens after that. You can read it for yourself at your leisure. On the third day, God made the land and seas and then vegetation, and God saw that it was good. On the fourth day, God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars, and God saw that it was good. On the fifth day, God created the great creatures of the sea and every living thing with which the water teems and that moves about in it, according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number, and fill the water in the seas, and let the birds increase on the earth. On the sixth day, God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Verse 26, Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. God saw all that he had made and it was very good. Reading Genesis 1 through the lens of the New Testament, we see the whole trinity involved in creation. The Hebrew noun for God, Elohim, is a plural noun. The Holy Spirit was involved in creation, verse 2, and it was through Jesus that creation came into being. And God said, we read in John's Gospel, that Jesus is God's word and that through him the universe was created. I've always marveled at those five little throwaway words in verse 16. He also made the stars. It's so understated, isn't it? Scientists estimate there are somewhere in between 100 to 400 billion stars in our galaxy alone. 
and our galaxy is but one of around a hundred billion galaxies. God made them all just like that. But that wasn't the pinnacle of his creation. No, the pinnacle of his creation was human beings. The universe in all its majesty was not made in the image of God, but we are. God made human beings with the ability to communicate with him. If you want to know what God is like, it is men and women together, male and female, who reflect his image. Of course, that has a great deal to say about the value of human life, the value of every single individual. As we read through this chapter, again and again, we read that God approved of all that he had made. He said, it is good. Many people today feel worthless, insecure, and of no value. But the message of Genesis chapter one is that we are the pinnacle of his good creation. And that even though we don't always do what is good, God still loves us wholeheartedly. Another really important lesson we learn from this passage is that work is a blessing, not a curse. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. Work is part of God's original good creation, not a result of the fall. Nicky Gumbel gives this rather interesting counsel. Don't work too hard. God took time to rest and enjoy what he had made, and he wants us to do the same. God didn't build us to work constantly. He created us with a need for relaxation and rest. So we need to take time to enjoy the fruit of our work. In Genesis 2 verses 16 to 17, we see that God gave Adam and Eve far-reaching permission. You are free to eat from any tree in the garden. By contrast, there was only one prohibition, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God warned them of the penalty if they disobeyed. When you eat of it, you will surely die. The message for us today is that we must recognize Satan's promptings for what they are lies designed to bring us down. We do not need to know and experience evil. God wants us to know only good. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the incredible universe in which you have placed us. Thank you that you have made us in your image so that we can know you and enjoy you forever. Help us to resist the evil one and to trust that your plan for our lives is only for our good. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us again today. Uh, I hope you have a really good day and may God bless you.